All right, I am Pops, and welcome to my review of Drisham 2. That's right, I haven't done a an Indian film for a little while. I'm trying to at least do a couple a month um, as I try to juggle some of the scheduling changes and some of the things that I've been doing over the last few months. Hopefully, you're uh, going to continue giving me those great recommendations, those great feedback. Um, I did do a review. You'll see the link in the description for Drisham, the first one, which is the 2015 version. I know there was one that was older than that. I didn't watch that one. I've only watched these. And I was actually very surprised. I didn't know this had come out in 2022. Don't, again, I've said in comments, uh, there's not marketing here. They don't tend to land in theaters very long. They don't always have English subtitles. Then they drop on streaming services and things like that. They don't always have English subtitles. So it's just, it's still, it's a thing with, even, even though when I can admit there's a growing fandom here for Indian cinema and great movies, it is also not the easiest and smoothest things. I probably should do a whole video on why this isn't getting bigger and stuff faster here in the States. But this was a really fun film originally. There's a little bit of a, a, a some backstory here to give you on the first film, which I would recommend. I enjoyed it. I did point out some of my issues with it as well as why I don't know that it would connect to all Americans. I will do that for this film as well. Um, but basically the essence of that story is a young boy named Sam. He snapped some photos in a bathroom of VJ's daughter in a shower. And that's like a huge no, no. It brings shame on her, brings shame on the family, that kind of thing. He uses this as a chance to blackmail her for sexual favors. And then ultimately the wife, because the wife was there during the confrontation and that gets a little physical and in the process of a scuffle, the daughter is the one that hits him with a pipe and kills him. And they basically come up with this, this scheme that no one's going to believe all this. Plus it'll make the photos come out and they basically hide the body. And there's this cat and mouse game with the police. She's very, very obnoxious. Um, she's played by taboo brilliantly, by the way, her name is Mira and she's really in charge of the police investigation and they can just never pin it on him. He has these great schemes of how to get rid of the body and how he stays free from penalty, which of course is explained in this movie. So if you haven't seen it, it's not crucial that you see the first one, but you'd probably get more out of this film if you would see the setup as well, because you'll have a lot better understanding of a couple of the other characters that will come into play. So here we're opening with a little flashback to, of a character named David. He's basically caught up in a drug deal gone wrong. He's a drug mule. Um, it turns ugly right when the police are arriving. He ends up killing the other guy, getting himself caught. But during during the uh, flee from police, he ends up seeing events of that night, that 2014 night, seven years ago. So the story picks up with VJ um, now doing very well for himself. Like life has gone on very well for the family. They're making good money. He still runs a little cable company. He's got a movie theater now. He sold part of his property now. He's working on a book. Uh, at least that's what we think in the beginning. The book has actually been published and it's going to be a basis for a film idea. Okay. Uh, and it's still some of the silliness and sweet relationship -y stuff. There's like a music montage that shows this, but you get like jokes at the wife's expense, which I guess play well. I think it's a little demoralizing, but it's, it's kind of fun. Um, there's, you know, Jose, who's the employee at the cable place, is kind of played for laughs, which is fine. Um, and then, of course, then you have this sort of like the the constant pulling back to the past. So it starts with uh, Mahesh, who is the dad, and then of course Amira is the mom of Sam. And they're still like they're un they're not able to let things go because they don't have any remains. Sam's body was never found, right? The other characters that matter here is a husband and wife character, uh, Sheev and uh, Jenny. And Jenny, Jenny matters. He's an alcoholic. He's abusive. He's whatever. There's some conflict there. Talk about calling the police, that kind of thing. And then um, there's the there's there's um, this move to install like closed circuit uh, cameras around his cable place, um, having money invested in this uh, film idea that he has. Those kinds of things. And um, you see different elements of like the worst side of VJ. You see early on about him like staying out all night. He's going on a drinking binge. He's kind of saying some, some weird quirks that don't quite fit the VJ that we know and that we like. So I thought it was very interesting in this early part of the film. And, and the filmmaker is very spot on in this early phase of the film too. Like when you're going to get a little dark, a little edgy, there will be a there'll be rain. There'll be a storm, those kinds of things. That sets up uh, the first exposure we have to uh, the daughter having nightmares, having an epileptic seizure, 
those kinds of things. And of course you have this uh, meeting, the first meeting we get with David and VJ, uh, just like a job thing. People just run into it. And we have, of course, uh, the return of uh, Guy Atande, who is the police officer who was like a dog with a bone, man. He, he was out to get VJ and just couldn't do it. Right. And whenever he's brought into it with this new, this other police officer, it's about going to see this new inspector general who's described as like crazy and genius, right? He's playing chess by himself. He just stands and stares at things, right? Because he's just so super smart. Um, and then, of course, when Mira comes back into the, the foray, it's because she has evidence. Well, what we don't know and what we learn is that the drunk guy and the wife, the Jenny in particular, matters because she's been really befriending um, the wife, right? He's been, re he's been, she, she's been really around the family and she's gotten this confession. They're undercover cops and Nandini has been duped into spilling enough information that they know VJ did something. They don't know where they remain. They don't have any evidence, right? But you have this great little moment where it's like, bum, 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 right? Uh, so I really liked all that. And then once David comes forward, because there, there, there was, they put out like offers on money as they were trying to re, uh, retrace some of the elements of the investigation. Which, by the way, would that work? I don't know about the court system in India. Um, I don't know that you're going to get any information. See, that's the thing. What's admissible in court is are people's memories of stuff seven years later admissible in court? I think that would just not fly here. There's no way that people are going to overturn a verdict one way or the other on some random memory from seven years ago do you remember where you were on october 2nd bubble um no i don't i mean you say that's where i was i mean i, I testified at the time that's what you get you know what i mean um and they use intimidation tactics the ig shows up at the house and there's this weird scene where i don't know why the mom's like what do you what do you, what do you want her want her in my house for you're a guest here's the room here's the bathroom go back in that room you know i'll just wander around my house but i know culture is different there i get it um and I also thought it was weird that he leaves in like a limo or something. I thought it was very strange. Anyway, you have these like manufactured moments because of Jenny. Jenny's a cop, right? But she's purposely trying to dupe the wife, Nandini, of like divulging information or getting VJ to come home and divulge information where the body is, what he actually did. And he just refuses to let anybody else know. He He's the only one that ever knows what actually happened, right? And he even gets so far as to try to go back to other police and say, listen, my family's still being harassed and that kind of thing. And this is where you get this great editing of the night this happened seven years ago to now with David. And ultimately, he's going to come forward as long as he gets his cut of the money about where the body is hidden. Now, if you don't want spoilers, this is where you would have to bail out because after this, there's no way to talk about all this without getting into like the deep spoilers really even of the first movie, because I've given you a lot about the first movie, but I didn't really spoil the main, main twist of the first movie, but I have to in order to kind of continue with my review and my conversation of the new one. So that's kind of what I'm going to do now. So that was your warning if you don't want spoilers. Okay, so as David is seeing uh, VJ walk out of the police station, he's remembering VJ walking away from the police station in the rain back on that fateful night, and it's like perfectly done. So you know that's where the skeleton is, or the skeleton was, it's where Sam's body is, okay? Now, as all of this is playing out, you have to also know that VJ has purposely put that closed-circuit camera TV, these cameras up, so he can watch on his phone. So he knows some of the stuff's happening, right? Um, and Mira is just awesome, my goodness. In that scene where it's revealed you know, Jenny is revealed to be a police officer. It's like, don't blame yourself. It's hard to find good neighbors these days. I don't know how well that translates from Indian or from the original language, but let me tell you what, it, it was pretty good. I really liked that line. That was really good. Guy Atande is like beating the family, making VJ walk, watch on the other side of the glass. Is that a thing that we're still doing? Like, I think some of the feedback from the original movie and some of that kind of stuff was, you know, corrupt cops. And it was from 2014. It was like from a while ago. Right. But I'm like, mm. so like here it would be like <clears throat> the 1970s cops or something. It'd be like old cop, not police now. 
anyway, none of that plays real well here. I wouldn't think any of that's legal. I wouldn't think I wouldn't think any of this would be admissible. I think all of it will be just be some sort of form of of co uh, coercion and uh, abuse. But again, it's okay. It works for the story. That's what happens. But Guy Atande, by the way, uh, I looked up his name. I'm sure I get. I, I'm not going to say it right. I apologize. Kamlesh Sawant. Sawant. Kamlesh. What a great performance, man. He is a monster. He's a monster. You hate this character so much. Um, so, yeah, all that stuff played pretty well. Okay. Ultimately, this is where the, the story gets really, really fast. Um, and you have, you know, the, the, the VJ's confession is on tape. He tells a story. And then, of course, he's going to go to court. So we have the cut in, with court and what's actually going to happen next, which is where the script writer for VJ's movie and, and the book comes forth and starts telling Sam's story, which is basically VJ's story from the first movie to now. He's recapping some different elements and talks about how VJ always wanted to change the ending, always wanted to come up with something different. And during this time, he's piecing all this together. Meanwhile, the IG guy who's listening to this gets a phone call. Like there's a problem, right? And they're admitting the fact that they tortured him. They're not denying all those kinds of things. The lawyer, VJ's lawyer is coming out going, wait, there's this, there's this novel that, that we wrote, he wrote called Drisham. And the police have stolen this idea, found this body, and they're just trying to pin it on my client. And this is working pretty good. And the book ending, as the scriptwriter is trying to explain all these different things, you start seeing all of these different flashbacks and stuff piecing together of what VJ actually did, of how he's been one step ahead of what was going to happen long ago. He didn't just do this stuff just a minute ago, right? We get to that. But he's done stuff. He's planted out the fact that they would find this body eventually. They, he knew the day would come where some of these things would come to light. He wrote about it in a book on purpose because he could use it as almost an alibi. Like, who would write what you did in this novel? And then we can blame the police. They're just trying to pin it on my client. Look at the story and how well it fits reality, right? And you have all of this going, and then you realize he's befriended, like, the security guard to get into here. He can get in, you know, got into the forensics lab. He's, he got into this. He knows how to do it. So when the moment comes and he sees the police and what they've done, he makes his move to get we presume is the actual body and he makes the move to get there and make the swap out for this skeleton. Cause he was searching the papers to find something where the, not, the cause of death would be very similar. The great little twist. I liked it to a certain point and the point comes when, cause the lawyer gets everything dismissed, everything gets thrown out. There's really no evidence to anything. Even though the writer explains that there was another twist about re re delivering the remains to the family, like admitting, you know, that's how it was going to go. But he kind of got off the hook. He, he got away with everything. And it was kind of a letdown that that's just kind of how it went. I was like, what? Wait, I don't understand. He didn't outsmart them. Like I thought there would be another twist or another turn and it didn't really come. It just become like, well, that was good enough. It got him out of the court case. And then he just kind of walks past them all. And then they're going to give them the remains. So the urn is left for the family at the end of the movie. And that's what happens. And the, you know, the dad's like, we got closure. You kind of have to let him go now, Mary, you got to move on. It's like, um, I don't know. I didn't like the end. I just, I thought, I thought he was going to be clever and have outsmarted them again with the, with the premise is so good in that he knew they'd find the body. He had figured out a way to swap things out. He knew that the book would come to light. The book and the screenwriter would tell them that he swapped the body out. Yet then when they would go, I thought they were going to go check and we'd find out that he maybe he had like a double swap or something else and then leave the urn. Like that would have worked. But I feel like, I feel like they just know he's still guilty. They still don't have any evidence. How would you not just basically fingerprint the urn and the note and know he did it? His hands are on it. If you didn't do this and who did it, check this DNA, something like that. I just, I, I didn't like the end. I did not like the end. I, I, I enjoyed the journey. Um, I, I, I think it's okay. But the idea of we have to let him go because he'll do anything for his family, I thought was a terrible 
take on things. I don't think that makes him a moral person at all. I think it just makes him really good at getting away with things. That's not necessarily good. Um, OJ uh, Devgan uh, is freaking great. <laughs> Absolutely great. Uh, I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, he's fantastic. I think this, this, this movie had a lot better pacing, had a great musical score at times. I know the original director had passed away. So this is a different director than the first film. I think that's probably makes the film technically a better film. Like it's a, it's a more entertaining film and an enjoyable journey. I don't blame him for the, the ending. I, I don't know if he is in charge of changing the ending or not. Um, I enjoyed all that. I think the actors and stuff, there was less taboo in this one, which makes sense. The guy that plays the IG, he was fine. Of course, guy Tande was great. Um, yeah, very, very solid. I don't know that it's super but it's, uh, it's, it's really, really solid. It's worth a watch. Um, again, I, I got a chance to watch it through the Amazon Prime services. So I don't know if it's on other services as well, but it is what's through Prime with English subtitles. So that worked out well for me. And I apologize for the, those of you who wanted me to watch this so much sooner. Uh, but like I said, they are kind of difficult at times to find with the right kind of subtitles. And obviously the time management is an issue when you're, when you're doing this stuff. But uh, I love good movies and this was a good movie. Even though I didn't like the ending as much, um, it wasn't a, I mean, look, this is the, this is the worst thing in the world. I'm not bashing this film. I mean, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. Um, but I will tell you, it was fun. I had a good time. So, uh, that's that. Keep those, keep those suggestions coming. Love your feedback and thoughts. Appreciate everything. I am Pops.